Welcome back, Noble Heroes. We return to Mythia once again, where our heroes are going to join each other for a meeting to discuss perhaps what to do about the pirate lords within the city. We join up with uh, Isaac. Um, as he heads outside, you're looking at all the notes. It looks like some kind of joke. Um, somebody has made a whole bunch of piratey sketches and asked you a bunch of times where you are and where you're going. Are you don't know these... who these are from. Okay. Except they None say of... red at the bottom. Okay, and I'm like, someone named Red is sending me but You know who Red is. You just can't remember anything about him. Right. Like, you know that he is a an important hero that you have at, at one point met, but can remember nothing about. Okay. Can we remember his fate at all when we... Yeah, you know him? what his fate is. Okay, but just very general stuff, right? Like, yes. Okay. Like, the, like, if I had heard of the figure Jamie... The Red. Okay. Like, if I'd heard of Jamie but never met her... Okay. Like what I knew about Jamie from, like, somebody else. I would be able to know that stuff. Gotcha. So you know that he can't be remembered, that he's an important hero of Giran, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Isaac is... I have a mechanics question. If I have a piece of something, is that enough for me to cast Locate Object? Locate Object just would determine where that object is, right? And since you already have the piece... If I come oh, within... I see what you're saying. I, I think locate object would just locate the piece. Okay, that's what I figured. <sighs> but if the other, if the whole sword was in range of a thousand feet, it would also find that. So as Isaac is walking, I'm, I'm presuming it's close enough for Isaac to walk. Otherwise, he'll take a cab. It's whatever. He's going to cast locate object and just see if anything pings. Yeah. No. While he's going through the city. However, I think in the just... description of the journal, it did state that it was sapbriar trees. Yep. You look around from the high hill that the library takes is on, you don't see a single tree in gear, and much less sapbriars, which are quite large and old. Really? I don't see any? There's like a sapling. Or like a like a couple of like dogwoods, park greenery, basically here and there. Yeah. Okay, but uh, briar, uh, sap briar are smelly. Yeah, and they're big, and like they tend to rip up like asphalt and concrete. Okay. Uh, he's just gonna ruminate on that, and obviously he's gonna be looking for like. I don't maybe there's like a massive tree stump somewhere in the city or something. He's just going to keep that in his mind as he goes to Rollins. All right. Yuffie. Red, having started with the crayons, is going to turn to you. So, uh, Bali is in the other room. Um, she's making herself some coffee uh, at the moment. Are and we in you all. House? No, you're at Red's place, waiting for them to contact you back. And his his house is like two blocks away from Roland's place. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, they both live in Old Town. Red's house is like wood paneling. Um, for. How wealthy you imagine Red probably is, his house is unimpressive. Um, it's like a two-story, two-bedroom, like one-bath house. Uh, if you ever came here, you don't remember it. Are there any interesting like personal artifacts anywhere within sight? Yeah, he's got a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Everywhere. Um, it's like the, the bat cave, but for an old man. Uh, he's got artifact pieces of monsters, uh, banners, little trophies that he took from somewhere. He has a bunch of different masks. Um, 
He has a very nice, like, cuckoo clock. Um, he has a kitchen table that looks like it was attacked by some kind of monster. He's going to look up at you. I don't want you to feel like it wasn't, like it was your fault that we didn't work out. (laughs) The look on her face is kind of a little exasperated. She lets him continue, though. Does he keep going? It's been a problem in the past. A lot of ladies see me, stirs back up feelings. Uh, You know, they've forgotten them. And then 20 years later, it's as fresh as the night that the, the match was lit, you know? So... It's because I, there's someone else. Are you that worried I have feelings for you? She asks. And if I did, why would it bother you? Since it happens all the time. Well, it's really a Harper thing. We've had issues working with people in the past who've you know, we accidentally had a fling with. Mm-hmm. So since it seems as though we're going to be working together on killings, projects, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, we're we're in a place of understanding. You know, I'm like mm-hmm. eight-tenths through my life, and you're probably like one-third through yours. So mm-hmm. we're just in very different places. Uh, Why did you use different fractions? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's red. Who knows how his, his brain works? So, I am in love with another woman. And I couldn't give myself to you even if I wanted to. This is the third time you've told me that. Is your memory failing, old man? <laughs> I'm used to people forgetting things So I repeat them She looked at him a beat Does the idea of fate breaking sometimes Yeah, sure Yeah It would be a freedom for a moment huh. So You think your friends are ever going to contact us? I think we should probably head to Roland's house soon all right. She grabs his arm. I sent mine back the moment they sent it to me where we were meeting. Oh, here we go. He says. Here, she says. You finally get one back. You are no longer lonely. <laughs> God, I love that funny. She looks <laughs> amused by that. He's going to take the note. Oh, Jennifer. Damn. All right. He's going to get up. Um, out of game. So had they already sent the notes off to everybody now to meet at Roland's house? Uh-huh. Okay, okay. There are two people I need to meet. Not me specifically, but I need those two to meet. One is our messenger. The other one is like a rabbit. <laughs> I need that to happen so bad. We just okay. need to, you know... Send a letter. This is a thing that's going to happen. <laughs> I will figure out how to do it, but it's got to happen. Okay, I'm good. Continue. Jennifer, in the coach on the way over to Roland's, you're going to look down at the notes, and as you flip through them, you're going to see that some of them are more significant than just one line. As you pick out one in particular, you're going to see that it appears to be somebody telling you that they have followed your advice and they want to set up another meeting with you. Do I recognize the handwriting? No, nor the name. As you flip that one over, you're going to get what appears to be a notice of debt. Some kind of building has fallen over. 
on your advice. A building has fallen over on my advice? That's what it says. Is there any seal signature? Yeah, the Garen Builders Guild. (laughs) So we know it's not a scam. Any idea what's going on? The fairy dust you mixed into the mortar was ineffective at holding the building upright. We don't put fairy dust in. What? What? As you flip a bill for a hundred thousand gold pieces for used wizard materials. She's so confused. Uh, does it ring any sort of bell that like they might have been mistaken for someone or somebody might be using our name but aren't us? This Wait. talks about a meeting on June the 3rd, which is four days ago. It's not them, is it? Definitely weren't here. It's freaking them. Them. I hate them. The esteemed guardians of fate, I presume. This does have the fingerprints of the esteemed guardians of fate all over it. Hero will see Jennifer visibly annoyed. A few sparks come off of her and she's grinding her teeth. What is it? He says. Thorn in my goddamn side. You? What is this, some kind of monster? If only it was, it would be so much more extinguishable. So what is it? Some kind of magical... Force? A bunch of idiots. <sighs> what kind oh. of idiots? You ever heard of a group called the Esteemed Guardians of Fate? The, she could just pack. Like, there's no more sarcasm that could be packed into her statement. I want to meet these people. He says, I want to kill these people. <laughs> <clears throat> My Cousin One Wheel actually said he spoke to that group like Her only a week ago. Witches. He received some kind of reading advice on interpretation of his fate. I strongly suggest he disregard that immediately. Wait, what is it? As I said, a bunch of morons. They're like charlatans? Yes. They pretend to be like us. She gestures at herself. They pretend to be fairies. Godmothers. Oh, that's probably worse. It is. How do you pretend to be a godmother? Poorly. She just looks really angry right now, and she goes, excuse me for a moment. She pulls out her mirror and uh, draws a sigil on it. Unless... Juniper... Do you have unusual letters that you're getting about debts? What is this mean? We didn't have a meeting on the 4th. Send the investigation team to look into the esteemed guardians of fate and their bullshittery. Oh, fuck! She says, I hate those guys. I know. You know, if there's one group that deserves what we discussed. It's them. She she goes... <sighs> That's pretty harsh even for them, June. No, it's not. <sighs> she says... You're pulling this nonsense at this time? A hundred thousand gold? I'll send you copies of the ones that I received. Send them to the intelligence team and deal with it. <sighs> if you need me to do something, let me know. She says... We'll see what kind of leads we can chase down. It's likely we're going to grasp a bunch of straws. You think they're still in Garen? It's only been a week. Hero, you said you, your cousin spoke to them earlier this week? Yeah, at the birth of his new baby. And you said it was on the third? Mm-hmm. Only five days ago. More than likely, they're still in the area. Maybe we can nab one of them this time. <sighs> Isn't their leader Othar? Uh, it's Ovar. Ovar, excuse me. She goes, if you can find Ovar, I'll string him up by his innards. 
She breathes. Looks like she's calming herself down. I'll send you the documents. Okay. She snaps it closed. If you could please put me in touch with your cousin, I would greatly appreciate it. Okay. I apologize for my outburst. As you can tell, some things even bother me. <sighs> you are going to have your carriage approached suddenly. Master Isaac! Master Isaac, it's me, Prongor! He oh, says. Thank the pet's a familiar face after all day. You're Good. suddenly going to see that he has been followed. Uh. Saul stands behind Prongor. Look who it is, Master Isaac. It's our friend Saul. Isaac's going to look to Saul and then... You said I was in a carriage, right? Yes, he is outside your window. Uh, He's going to pause for a moment and then he's going to push open the door and usher the two of them into the carriage and then instruct the driver to just kind of meander us around the city for a bit. See, I told you, Prongor. Those guys weren't wrong at all. He says, sort of hitting him on the shoulder. He goes, Master, Saul seems to have come upon a number of fate readers within the city. People who gave him valuable information about today. Saul, first and foremost, the sword. Hand it over now. I need to take a look at it. All right. He is going to... Uh, say, uh, well, boss, I'm not carrying around in a bag, you know. It's pretty dangerous stuff. Where are you hiding it? Back at the inn. I've got it stuffed under the floorboards. Which inn? He will tell there you There are people that, that can spot those things through floorboards, you know. He goes, one of the fancy wizards back in Salonox wrapped it in a special cloth for me. Said that it was called Midnight Blanket. Apparently it's supposed to stop any unwanted gazes upon it, you know. Impressive. Uh, anyway, so, you're here in the city. It's great news. I am. Unexpected, but... Me and the old ball and chain were waiting over at the Prancing Goat for you to arrive. I see. Did you have any trouble getting in the city? He says, nah, it was easy. They tried to confiscate my hammer, he says, but I told him it was for self-defense. <laughs> uh, okay, Isaac wants to, like, look Saul up and down and use insight to see if there's anything off about him or if he really is just his usual self. Saul is a flat-headed Empty-headed man. Uh, quite the brute of build and nature. He has extremely thick arms and an extremely thick skull. His fate is that once in his life, every bone in his body is going to break. Oh. And he would tell you that he's about 90% of the way there already. <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> That's the funniest fate I've heard all game. Uh, how far are we you from... You think that it would be almost impossible for a man like Saul to hide anything particularly cunning or devastating inside his okay. mind. Forget that question then. Um, he is going to quickly begin to regale you with the story of his uneventful journey from Selenox to Garen. <laughs> and... His enthusiasm about uh, beginning jobs for you again. Isaac's going to tell the cab driver to bring us about to an address he knows is like a block, two blocks away from the inn and have him drop them off. He right. wants to pick up the sword before he goes to meet the group. Okay. As you go inside uh, the inn... You can see that it's a rowdy place, the kind that Saul would prefer, with thick drinks. Um, Saul is going to have you stand in the doorway. His wife is a skinny, frazzly-haired woman 
who looks like she would like be knock down an alleyway and then like stab you when you came up to her. Um, she has a thin gaunt mouth, uh, and a shrill voice. And she's going to say, do I know what her name is? Um, yeah, Mary. <laughs> Let's pick a different name. <laughs> All right. Um, Maria. Okay. Uh, Isaac will kind of like sit down with his, the four of them and instruct Saul to go get the thing. And then, uh, Maria, it's been quite some time. You're looking healthy as ever. Oh, thank you, Isaac. She says, how are you doing these days? The arts treating you well? Well enough. I think you and Saul will be happy to know that I'm scoping out the city, looking for opportunities. Your efforts getting here will not be wasted. Oh, we're most pleased to hear that. We're running short on coin and time, she says. I've got it, Saul says. He's going to wrench out what appears to be definitely not a whole sword. Um, as he pulls it out, you're going to see that it, the blanket that it's covering it, it does look like a very interesting silk garment. As he pulls it off, you will see a sort of almost fossilized blade. It looks like it's made of bone. The blade? The whole thing. The whole thing. Okay. One singular piece of bone. Right. Black like a fossil. Almost like it was made out of oil. You see I... that... Go ahead. It is not sharp anymore you said piece is it broken off at a point the about the last third of the blade is broken off okay Saul in your letter you said that this thing had taken a liking to you what did you mean by that Isaac says and he's kind of like running his fingers along the edge of the blade as he says this I'll show you he says he's gonna cut his finger on the end of it and as he does, he's going to draw his thumb away from the blade. And you'll see his blood trickles through the air. And it's going to form on the blade and solidify like ice extending the blade out. I see. I think I have some ideas. Here, Isaac's going to reach like into his pouch and kind of give them a satchel of money to keep them in the city for the time being and say... I was just telling the others that I'm making plans for us. This should hold you over for now, but I know we just met. I need to leave. There are things I must attend to. Saul nods. Should we keep the blade here? I'm going to take it with me for now. I'll be in touch. Okay. Prongor, come with me. Yes, master. He says. You two, keep a low profile. Don't get any unwanted attention. You want us to be doing anything? Finding out things? Actually, Isaac's going to pull out a piece of paper and then scroll down. Sat Briar. See if you can find any information about where these sorts of trees may have been in Garen in the past. I think this is something the locals may know about. We're asking about trees. Is this for a ritual? Something of the sort. I think these trees will lead us to something much more valuable. We've got Chessa, she says. We'll find out. Saul's going to take the note and fold it up and put it in his pouch. Okay. He's going to shove the leg of the, the, the floor back down. He says, we're on standby for you, sir. Good. This will last us a good few months. It feels good to have you all on hand again. Prongor is going to nod enthusiastically. A come big Prongor. happy family, he says. <laughs> Isaac says, come Prongor. I think the others are waiting for us. And we've already taken too much of a detour. Indeed, Master, he says. What do you think of my new haircut? Bali says. Haircuts. 
Maybe Isaac should get a haircut. Maybe he should. Maybe we should all just go get our hair cut. Like, forget the storyline. Let's just go and get a makeover. She'll glance at uh, Bali's hair. It's different. What made you decide to go for the change? I figured it was going to get hot. Well, that, that's fair. Plus, um, you know. Clearly, I'm trying something new. It looks good on you. Thanks. Was that hairdresser fun to talk to? She wouldn't shut up, honestly. You know, I thought elves were supposed to be reserved, but apparently not this one. Did you say anything interesting about the city? Just reminded me of home, really. Yeah. Haven't been to soft sand in a while. Did you want to visit? We've got too much important stuff going on. I have a feeling we will always have a lot of important shit to take care of. If it's important to you, Bali, we'll make the time for it. Uh, Red is going to knock on the door to Roland's house. You gonna do the talking, she asks him? Sure, Red says. Roland's family, his mother particularly, is going to answer the door. Uh, as soon as Red is outside, she is going to graciously invite all of you in. You must be some of Roland's friends, she says. Euphemia would nod. Yes, I wish he could be here too. And I wish he could remember to tell us people's names. She says. She is going to introduce herself and the family members that are with her at the moment. Her name is Christina. Uh, their last name is Tarkin. Um, and she is going to introduce also uh, his twin sisters, Erica. Uh, Allison is, all of his sisters are older than he is, except for Erica. Um, but the only other one there is named Allison, and she appears to be very sickly and blind. Um, she's going to invite all of you in. Red, how are you? I'm pretty good. I was just uh, hoping maybe you had something bacon, he says. We're expecting a few more in a little bit. I hope that's okay. That's fine, she says. It seems as though we've become somewhat of a stopover in the city for certain types of individuals, she says. We usually keep the oven running. Uh, with that, she's going to walk over. Uh, Euphemia, this is Allison. Allison is going to give a nod in your direction. Allison's the one who looks sickly, right? Yes. Okay. She says, are you one of the heroes? She asks. Euphemia nods. I am. She reaches her hand out. My name is Euphemia Carr. She's going to take your smaller hand in hers, and then she kind of feels it. You have rough hands. She says, ship? Good guess. Many years of work. She nods. She says, do you mind? She's going to, like, want to pull your hand over a little bit. No. She lets her take her hand. She's going to feel your palm dagger. It's the muscles you build up in your hand. It's not a cutlass. It's too small. She hands you back your hand. Where did you learn to read... <laughs> Calluses from fighting so well, Roland, right? She gives a small smile. I don't really have much else to do, she says. So I helped Roland repair his hands every day. Euphemia looks at her. I assume you've... Forgive me, but you seem like you feel unwell. It's my fate, she says. Very simple. You will lose. Euphemia waits a beat. Can win a darn game for my life, 
she says with a bit of a chuckle. Euphemia looks like she's considering something that she's unsure about. Mm, don't you think? Of course, what else would she be thinking? Mm. Come on. She's going to screw something up horribly, probably. She leans forward. What would you do if your fate could be taken away from you? You will see the room go very quiet. What do you mean? Isn't her mother, Christina asks. I have the ability to pull out intangibles from people, like their fate, their sickness, their joy, their pain. And if someone's willing to do it, it's not that hard. There is a moment where a thread of tension hangs in the air. A knock rings on the door. Euphemia starts. Hang on, Christina says as she walks over and opens the door to see Jennifer and Hero, followed very closely by Isaac and Prongor. Welcome, she says. Please come in. Thank you. Hey, guys, you got my notes. No thanks to you. What do you mean? What do you mean? I gave you great drawings. It took me a long time to do that. Euphemia will say, I'm sorry, it, it took me a moment to catch on to what he was doing. Mm-hmm. She was helping. Don't let her lie to you. Mm-hmm. She stole him our artistic talent, too. Mm-hmm. Isaac's going to drop I don't think a... you had any to steal. Rough. He drops a pile on the table as he walks in and says, Do you have to go through so much paper? <laughs> he says... It's all I spend money on. You're going to deny me my one creature comfort in the whole wide world. Isaac Euphemia. Crowey, Mr. Rich Nobleman. Euphemia says, it's true. His house is... well. I mean, when you put it that way, no, I won't. I he take says, it back. I hope you feel terrible about it. I do. You're looking a little worse for wear there, buddy. He says, as his head sort of directs down towards your leg. What in the world? Isaac, what? I thought you were... I would have covered that up by now. But I guess I didn't... <laughs> well, in like the regular pattern of your walking, it becomes revealed. Am I hobbling? Okay. God. Why uh, don't you heal yourself? You're a cleric. Master Isaac, is this something to do with the battle injuries you sustained? How did he not notice yet? Come on. He's like... Obsessed. He is obsessed. Right. He, he was very him. excited like for other things obsequious. at the moment. Officious. Isaac's going to like ease himself into a chair and look at June and say, "I, this runs deeper than what's normal, but now is not the time to discuss it. She glances around at everybody in the room and nods. Um, out of game. Will it cause have... problems? Sorry. I think I'll be okay. Have Don and Johnny shown up yet? No. Uh, and then after that good old back and forth, Isaac's going to turn to Prongor and just remind him, like, we're in the house of a hero, so you know how to present yourself. Like, just giving him a reminder of, like, how to behave. Yeah. June will turn towards Christina. She knows them, even though they don't know her. She goes, I presume you are Christina, yes? Yes. I hope you all like fish, she says as she goes over to the oven. Love it. Euphemia calls after her. Oh, Erica, can you get that? She says. You will see Erica, uh, who looks very much like a female Roland, is going to head over towards the door and open it up, and your the rest of your pirate crew comes spilling in the doorway. Um, we have some dwarven brew, elven brew, halfling brew, and dragonborn brew, whichever you prefer. Everybody seems to like a different type. She says. And this meat's from the white boar. She says as she sets down uh, both the fish and, like, some pork tenderloin. Euphemia will decline any drink except water. Okay. I think I'm actually going to have some hot chocolate. Just a moment. Would you like some? 
I can help you with it. Oh, not necessary. She taps the beetle, sets it on the ground, opens it, and then just pulls out a steaming pot of it and sets it on the table. You must be Juniper, Erica says, smiling a little bit. (laughs) Indeed. That was all Roland said when he came back was, Juniper likes sweets. (laughs) He's not wrong. She says, uh, Christine is going to ask, it seems like you all had a pretty big fight. I could say that. Is he doing well? Is he okay? Yes. You'll all look out for him, right? Do not. So, uh, we'll make ourselves scarce, she says, so that you can use our table. And Red's just kind of acting like this is a normal occurrence. June shoots a dirty look at Red, by the way. She's going to turn and they all seem to head out of the room with her mother leading um, leading Allison. Euphemia turns to the rest of the group. Thank you all for coming on such short notice. Of course. What happened? Food. Red says. Starts getting some food onto his plate. From the still open beetle box, she pulls out a plate of banana bread that she brought from the wheelhouse. And a few cookies that when you crack them open, they roar. (laughs) What? You open them? Well, she's hungry and they're delicious. Red is going to reach over with his steak knife and cut your banana bread and take a slice. The used on fish steak knife? No, he hasn't cut the meat with it yet. Okay. He's got a little bit of decency. He wouldn't do that. Just, just a tiny bit, though. She's fine with it, as long as he didn't use it on fish first, because gross. We're good. She goes... <laughs> I already have a piece. <laughs> I can see that. I will take a piece of that roaring thing. Oh, the cookies, yes, of course. Those are huge, Hero says. Would you like one? Yeah. Freshly made, only a few hours ago. It's like the size of a pie. I know. Why is it roar? Uh, Phelob is fond of including sounds and feelings in his cooking and baking. Interesting. Caleb is a little more, bit more traditional in his baking. They're twins. Uh, sorry, that's off topic. Mm-hmm. We have two pirate lords that I need your assistance dealing with. Okay. I should have mentioned this before. Which pirate lords are we talking about? Dom says. Jake and Kel Rock. Jake is the one that can dominate things, right? With a glance, yes. Hmm. Awkward. Um, yes, but he does need to see them. Bolly's going to whisper, they're in town, to Dom. Dom looks alarmed, and then is going to look over at you. Could have led with that. My bad. There's something I hadn't told the rest of you. Before we were called on this prophecy to save the world, our crew had our own mission that we were about. Ronan, the Pirate King's reign, will not last forever. When Ronan... You hear like a catch in her throat, like she's sad about what she's saying next. When Ronan dies, the tethers that hold back the worst impulses of the Pirate Lords will be broken. It'll be bridge walk everywhere on the coast. Ronan's aware of this, and he decided to dispatch us on a mission to... Clean house? Exactly. The idea was to make a space for us, for those who would work towards better aims than the typical pirate, in whatever avenue we'd like. 
But for those who would not be interested in a better way of living, to kill them all. Red gives a whistle. June looks at each person as you're doing it. She wants to see everyone's reaction as she takes it in herself. Isaac, what's your reaction then? Fongor is like nodding, like, yes, understood. (laughs) Yay, killing. Ronan wants us to kill any of the pirate lords that don't fall within what he thinks pirates should be. He wants us to ensure the destruction of forces that would be detrimental to the good people of the world. And who's to make that judgment? It's an interesting question. I don't know much about the pirate lords, but how many of them are like you and how many of them are like the ones you've described? I know of at least one other pirate lord who is similar to the rest of us. Doesn't have an interest particularly in brutality. Just one. Just one. So then that leaves all the rest. Right. You've surmised correctly. This seems almost more an insurmountable task than gathering the shards of the crown. (laughs) No. (sighs) Just hunting them down. Finding where they're hiding. Well, we do have some insider knowledge. And the idea would have been to potentially be able to set some of them against each other. They don't all get along. That's true. Anyway, that sort of took a back burner, considering what's going on. But long term, there'll be a problem. They're pirates. This could cause chaos and disarray across all of Mythia if they were to run free. Considering what we saw in Bridgewalk, just from one crew? Well, one group of a crew. Tell me, when we take out the lords, what happens to their crew? I'd imagine another fish just swims up and takes his or her spot. It depends. Some of them were probably captured and are forced to do things. I've been in that place. Many of us have been in that place. And then there are others who just enjoy the brutality and the slaughtering and the potential to rape and maim as much as they want. What exactly are Ronan's plans to fill the voids? She looks between you and Dom. The voids that the pirate lords themselves would leave? Like Isaac said, cut off the head and then somebody's going to come and place a new one there. Correct. Does he have specific people he wishes to plant? Sounds to me... It's a very godmother question. Red says... It's a very godmother (laughs) question. (laughs) Well... Sounds to me like he wants the whole kingdom to fall down around him. Yes. He wants to destroy everything he's built his entire life. Everyone. Pretty much. So from what I know about pirates, all of them only follow Ronan's banner because he's so strong that none of them can oppose him. And the only reason that they have the sort of protections that they do is because of that banner. That's right. It's the reason why the pirates we see today typically don't engage in wanton massacre. If Ronan were to die, and so were all of these mighty pirate lords that were going to take out them, would pirates even be able to continue existing after that? That might be too much of a blow. Do they need to? In that 
She holds her hand up. That's not what I meant. I don't mean to wipe out the pirates, but perhaps they could fill a different role. That's exactly the aim. There's always going to be a space, I think, in this world for those who crave adventure and excitement on the seas, but we don't have to be tyrants about it. There's plenty of those on land as it is. I agree with you wholeheartedly on that fact. There are some personal reasons I need to get my hands on Kelrock. But them being in town presents too good of a chance for us to potentially strike a blow, preemptively. While they are inside Girin, they are protected by the treaties. Yes, unfortunately. I assume you are planning to go for them in the harbors, outside the bounds. Correct. It's the only option. Legally, you'd have to be outside the chains. Just outside them? Well, I happen to stop by the docks on the way to meet Euphemia. I might have seen that Calrock's fleet is a little too large to fit entirely within the confines of the docks. He has a couple of ships that are beyond the chain. You got anything to say about this old man? Red says to Dom. Euphemia nods to Dom. Dom is going to... I... Know that my brother's intentions, what he is hoping for, is to strike the tower that is piracy's strength at the very base. To knock out one of its foundational pillars so that the entirety of it crumbles and collapses together in one giant heap, each part crushing the next. But he cannot do that until the structure is significantly weakened. I have an out-of-game question. Are any of us aware about the bounty on her? I'm assuming that's a fairly well-known thing by now. Um, You mean the pirate bounty? Yeah, she mentioned that. Did you tell us? Yeah. I completely forgot. Okay, cool. Way, way back when. Okay. I just lumped the same with the things you weren't telling us about pirates. (laughs) Sorry. No. (laughs) <laughs> that one she said, I think. I think you're right. I think I remember that conversation in Bridgewell. I, I so yes. I wouldn't doubt it. So It would make a lot of sense if you told us that one, considering. Considering it's rather pertinent? Yeah. If we just start getting packed by pirates, it's kind of an important thing to know. Yeah, she'll okay. have to mention the other bounty, too. There's a second bounty? Yeah. That we don't know about? Yeah. Okay. She goes, I assume this pertains to the bounty that was placed on you. Yes, as far as every other pirate pretty much knows, Dom, myself, the rest of the crew, we we rebelled, stole the Outrunner, and are working against Ronan. They have no idea he has any of these aims. Considering they would attack him straight on if they did, yes, that makes sense. As long as his fate holds, I'd wish them luck with that. Out of game. His fate is whenever he's on a ship, he never loses. He can do no wrong. He can do no wrong. All you have to do is catch him not on a ship. But he literally lives on a... Like, all the planks are from a ship. Like, his whole house yeah, that he lives in. Oh, his house. His oh. house, everything like that. Yeah, I was like, the Isle of Bones totally is an isle. It's an isle, but his house and the structure and everything, it's okay. It's on the planks of a ship, so whenever they do greet him, he's he's on a ship. Does he never leave his house? He hasn't recently. Gotcha. He's yeah. not an idiot. I figured as much, <laughs> but I mean, circumstances might prevail that he had to leave for some right. reason. She nods. Okay. So what exactly is your plan? Well, I need to get my hands on Kelrock. I'd love to take both of them out. I could sneak onto one of the ships, but beyond that, I was hoping we could all put our heads together. I don't want to cause a diplomatic incident. That would be bad. I think killing two pirate lords in the 
harbor of Kieran is going to cause an incident. Thus, the reason it must be outside. I harbor. don't intend to do it within the harbor. Do you have any method of luring them out while we would still have an advantage? They don't have a ship. No, but I suppose I could procure one if needed. Well, you did mention there are several outside the chain. You want to start there? I'm simply giving suggestions. This is your circus. <laughs> it is a circus. Oh, I need you to cast Ascending. Okay. She says the name Rawl. Tottlebottom. Tottlebottom. Uh, can... If somebody casts Sending, can, like, the other person talk to them, or does it, like, have to be you who sends? Okay, we have to... Are we doing it the real way, or the way we've been house ruling it, because it's annoying the real way? The house rule way. Okay, good. Then yes, we can talk back and forth. Okay. For, what is it, a minute? But you can't hand over the phone to her. Correct. She goes, I will have to speak for you. I'm asking you to send to an old friend of mine who Kelrock may have tortured for information on me. I need to know if he's safe, if his family's safe, what might have happened. And what information may have been obtained. Out of game. Do I think scrying would be better? Why do you say that? Well, we could just see it. That's true. I mean, see as opposed to speaking. Do I think... Well, can anyone else hear the, the sending other than him? I can't remember. No. It is a significantly higher level spell. Alright. I'll have to use wishes. I don't actually have that one. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Oh, sorry. Out of game. It's sorry. fine. Sorry. No, no, I, I was originally <laughs> going to take it, but I took it off because we have a messenger. <laughs> yeah but I don't want to send the messenger I don't want to send a messenger considering we don't know the situation exactly. so I'm not going to put my baby bunny in danger I don't want my friend to get slaughtered so there mm -hmm. sorry about going for the bunny first but I like the bunny more Priorities. I don't know yours <laughs> okay she goes uh, well first and foremost what do you want me to say introduce yourself as someone reaching out on behalf of Euphemia Carr June is going to hold her hand out and on a piece of paper, everything that she hears, she immediately magically transcribes on the paper so that she can see it as it comes out. Uh, okay. That way she can just tell me what she wants to say. Okay. okay. She'd say, this is from Euphemia. Are you okay? I just ran into Kelrock and he said that he had tortured you for information. What's going on? All right, she opens it up and she goes, what, what's this kid's name? Sorry. Roll. Roll. Toddlebottom. R-A-U-L. Okay. She will cast sending. Okay. Uh, she will get, actually, she gets up. Can I, uh, have we taken an extended since? No. She does take out her Wishmaster's Rod, and she'll cast Sending through Wishing. Okay. And uh, she'll basically transfer what she said, saying that I'm an ally of Euphemia. She asked me to ask you these things. She then... Uh, what? Huh? Who is this? Euphemia would have put something in there, like a reference to a code word, a basically. Joke, sort of. They had something they'd had in common. I'm not in pain. I, I've not. It, he doesn't seem. He seems very confused by the sending magic. Um, <laughs> no, I am not tortured. I, I've not told anybody about that information. That information was transcribed word for word and the uhs and uh, uh were also put in. Then you've not seen any pirates any time recently. 
Just pretend like she's speaking for me. No. Not in years. Did you tell anyone else the information that you and I discussed? No. I didn't. She's going to fill in. Have you been thinking of it recently? Not for quite a while. And certainly it's not come up in any conversations. Why? why? What has happened? Will she see that there? Okay. Everything is okay. instant time. Got it. Red's going to go like this. Is, is it gone? Huh? Are you saying to cut it off? Yeah. It's a trap. Red says. He wants you to find Raw for him. She nods. But where did... He doesn't know. It's a rumor. He's trying to get you to confirm it by finding Roll. She says, stay hidden, stay quiet. Keep your head down. She talks for you at this point. I think they're looking for you. It's an old trick. It was used by me on, used on me by a vampire once. It's a nasty one, isn't it? Did What's-His-Face respond after I said that? No, he he physically nodded. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Not helpful. She will. She says, if you have anything left to say, say it now before I cut the transla- transmission. Uh, tell her uh, that I still think of her occasionally and remember what we went through. Euphemia gives a little half smile. I don't know how in the world Kel Rock got information like that. Rumors. I'm assuming you're not saying that. I'm going to cut it off. Yeah. Because I was going to go, keep it secret. Keep it safe. Okay. <laughs> Let's think. In the market, he said that he was the one to pick you up off the water, right? He was. Three days after the events with Jossia? I suppose he could have drawn conclusions. But... And then your face says everything else. She gives him a droll look. That would not have been well-known knowledge that there was any kind of upheaval in Aragoth. You know how tightly those things are held down. He's got pirates on the inside. Yes, that's why I want access to him. What do you want from pirates in Aragoth? Information. Hmm. I have an out of game question. Doesn't Jossia have somebody who can like read minds or find secrets? Mm-hmm. This dude lives in Aragoth. Who lives in Aragoth? Brawl. No. No. Okay. no. He lives in the Halfling Hills. Okay, cool. Definitely not in Aragoth. I was gonna say, I was like, uh but that one fellow who said he didn't like you. You mean because she destroyed his father, basically? Yeah, he's based out of Aragoth, right? He is. She says, I'm willing to bet that Jossia's secret finder found out the information and is now working with that pirate. Yes, which is why I have a rather significant bounty on my head now. With the likely revelation that Euphemia's secret might be not so secretive anymore... We will go ahead and call it there for the time being, Noble Heroes. We'd like to thank you for joining us. Please give us a like and subscribe if you enjoyed our content. And do try this at home.